Howdy, my name is Billy Hoya. I am one of the librarians here at Lone Star North Harris Library. And today I am going to be doing a basic walkthrough here on how to use uh, OBS Studio. Uh, OBS Studio, that stands for uh, Open Broadcaster Studio. No relation to One Button Studio, that's something completely uh, different uh, in our library there. Uh, this is software that you can actually download and you can use on your computer. Um, OBS Studio, it's used a lot for um, streaming video. Uh, so uh, people who stream uh, video to YouTube or to uh, Twitch or other services like that, they use OBS Studio to, uh, do, to handle multiple cameras and different, uh, uh, different sort of uh, um, uh, video sources and whatnot. But today, we're just going to be using it. We're going to be uh, capturing video and saving it to files that you can edit in other uh, source in other uh, programs like Shotcut or Adobe Premiere or iMovie. And then you can take those files and you can upload them um, either to YouTube or some other place where you um, share video at. All right? So... Um, at this point, you should have OBS Studio uh, downloaded in, and installed on your computer. If you don't, we have a link in our uh, in the in the uh, description here to get you to OBS Studio. Uh, OBS Studio is open source, uh, free software, um, so you can go to the website. You don't have to pay anything to download it. Uh, it runs on Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. But today, I'm going to be showing you on uh, a Windows 10 computer. So it will look a little bit different if you run this on Mac OS or Linux. Before we even get started, there is, uh, if you're running this on a laptop, uh, there is a setting that we do need to check on. A lot of newer laptops, uh, they actually have two graphic processor units in them, or GPUs. Um, there's usually uh, an Intel, uh, in, uh, onboard GPU that's usually quite power efficient, but doesn't handle like really big like 3D graphics or anything like that very well. And then there may be a uh, second processor, uh, something like an NVIDIA uh, graphic processor for handling those 3D graphics. Um, sometimes programs will start, most programs will try to start under the, uh, the Intel uh, GPU because it does, if the laptop's running on battery, uh, that GPU uses significantly less power than the, uh, the high performance GPU. And so most uh, applications will try to start on that GPU. Uh, the only problem is that if uh, an application starts on the high performance one, uh, it can't capture any of the video that's actually being made on the power saving one. And OBS tends to, to do that. It wants to start on the, um, the uh, high performance graphic card, but since none of the apps usually are on there, there's nothing for it to capture. So before we even start, let's go down here. Uh, I'm gonna show you on Windows 10 how to uh, tell Windows to start OBS on the, the Intel uh, GPU. So if you go down here, we're gonna go to the uh, Windows, uh, the uh, uh, Windows menu, and then we are going to pick settings. So we have settings here. We're going to go to system. We're going to click on display, and then we're going to scroll all the way down here where it says graphics settings. Now I already have uh, OBS Studio set up here, but uh, if this is your first time running it or installing it on your computer, you'll need to click on this browse button. And so if you just go here, we're just going to, I'm just going to show you where it's at. Um, so if you go to uh, your C drive or wherever you have Windows installed, uh, you're going to find program files. You're going to scroll down until you find OBS Studio. You're going to click uh, bin. You're going to select 64-bit. Uh, and then you're going to select uh, OBS 64 um, uh, um, executable, um, and then click Add. I already have this, so I'm not going to uh, click it on right now. Once you uh, 
do all that, you'll have uh, OBS Studio. It should show up here in uh, the uh, list of applications. If you click on that, uh, you'll get a little bit expanded more information about it. And then if you click on Options, you'll get this, um, you'll get this uh, menu right here. And you can see in my laptop I have, uh, for my power saving GPU, I have an Intel uh, H uh, UHD graphics. And then my high performance uh, GPU is the NVIDIA GeForce there. Uh, so usually this is set to system default, but we want that set to power saving. And we'll go on and hit save. And so that'll make sure that OBS starts on uh, the Intel graphics uh, processor. So I already have OBS uh, started here. Um, when you first start it up, you'll, get, you'll see something like this, a black screen. Uh, maybe uh, if you've got a, a mic in, you may see the, the level down here. If there are any applications that are playing, you'll see that in desktop audio. So you can actually, if you're playing back uh, something that has some music or noise or something and you want to turn it down, you can use this little uh, slider here. Um, if you're trying to get your audio right for whatever reason, you can actually take this and you can slide it down or back up however you want to do it. If you need to, uh, oops, uh, if you need to actually mute one of those channels, you can just uh, click that little speaker and you'll see it where it'll X out like that and that'll let you mute uh, the audio. So let's just do uh, a simple screen capture here. If you look here, um, you have two panels. You have the scenes um, and you have the sources. And you'll see right now there's no sources. So we're going to go on and click that plus sign like that. And it's going to give us a whole list of uh, different things here. Uh, let's go on. We're going to select uh, Display Capture. And we're going to create new because we don't have anything on here right now. We'll say OK. And here it is. So this is the Display Capture. I know this is a little, uh, may make you a little queasy here. But uh, this is just giving you an example of what's uh, being displayed. If you have more than one monitor, so if you're doing this on a desktop, or maybe if you have your laptop plugged up in uh, to multiple monitors, you would see display one to display two, and you could actually select which display you wanted to use there. Um, that's kind of nice. Uh, if you do have two monitors, you can put OBS on uh, one monitor, and then you can do whatever your whatever example you're trying to do on uh, you know the second monitor, and that way. You can actually use the scenes to uh, do some overlays and different things like that. But we're not going to do that right now. Let's go on and click. Uh, we're just going to select this first dis display here. And we're going to click OK. And there is our display right there. If we wanted to, we could just go on down here where it says uh, Start Recording. And we could click that. And you'll see down here it's uh, recording. Uh, if you want to pause recording, you could just click that little pause button. And you'll see it'll show you a little pause icon here. And when you wanted to start again, you could just um, hit uh, pause again, and you'll see that pause icon will turn red again. So if you just wanted to uh, record video now, all you'd have to do, you could just minimize that and say, let's say we were going to show a, a library database here. Then I can just pull up a web browser, and I could just go on and start doing that um, right here and narrate it as I go. Uh, where is my library database? Let's go in here. So I could go in here and I could show someone. Let's show some, let's show you how to use Academic Search Complete. Let's go in here. Um, and it's going to ask me for my library barcode, but I'm going to log in with my Lone Star username and password. And there's Academic Search Complete, so I could show someone how to do this or any application. So if you wanted to show someone how to use um, uh, PowerPoint or Word, or you were uh, going over some file or video, you can do that. You could just open it on your computer and you could uh, start doing that in here. Uh, once you got done, you could just pull um, One Button Studio back up here. And then you could just go on and you could hit stop. Um, once you hit stop, those videos are all uh, stored in your. Um, home folder. So if you go here to let's see this PC. Mm -mm -mm. 
There it is. So it should be stored in your videos in your um, in your home folder there. And so you can see there's the, the video that I just did there. All right. Um, if you wanted to do something a little bit more fancy, say you wanted to um, uh, do like maybe your picture in here while so they could see your face while you were uh, narrating uh, whatever you're uh, doing on the screen. If you go here to the little plus sign, you can go here and uh, you'll see down here where it says video capture device. If you click on that, it'll um, ask you to and create new. So I'm going to go on and create new. So there's my shining face. Um, there's a bunch of different settings you can go through here. If there's more than one camera on your computer, you can pick it there. I've only got one online. Uh, there's configure video, so you can go through here and you can mess with uh, uh, some of the different settings if, if uh, you want to make something brighter or the color's not coming out quite right. Uh, you can mess with some of those and uh, try to fix it that way. We're going to go on and leave the defaults here. So you can see now, uh, I'm going to turn off, so if you look down here, these little eyes, I'm going to turn this off for, oh, I'm going to turn this off for just a second because it a little bit disorientating uh, when we're working on this. But you can see I've got my uh, picture here, and I'm just going to grab one of these little uh, boxes here. And so I'm going to minimize it like that. And I can put myself right down there in the corner. And uh, I'm going to turn this guy back on. So you can see now I can uh, instruct. So if I minimize that again, I can go back to the website. And it's still going to record a picture of me, but I can go back in here. And so people can see my face. Uh, while I'm doing uh, some instruction and walking people through uh, some different stuff here. So um, let's go on. I'm going to record this for just a second. So we're, let's go on and hit uh, start recording just so I can show you what this looks like uh, once you get done with it. So here we are. We're in the database. Uh, I still have my little picture down there in the corner. I'm going to open up this PDF. Um, so you can see, and we can go through, you can show students how to get the uh, uh, permanent link there. Um, and when we get done, we can just go back here to uh, One Button Studio, and I'm going to just hit that stop recording. All right. So let's go take a look at uh, the actual video that we got from this real quick. So I'm going to minimize this for just a second. So let's go and find that video file. So the videos are going to be stored um, they're usually in your user folder, so um, if, you, if you're coming in here, it'll be C, users, uh, your username, I'm Billy on here. Um, and then uh, if you scroll all the way down here, there should be a videos folder. Usually the videos folder is here in the, the little quick bar thing, so you can just select it there. Or you can navigate all the way here. And you'll see here, here's our little uh, video that we just did. And so I'm going to open that up, what this looks like. Uh, once you get done with it. So here we are, we're in the database. Uh, I still have my little picture down there in the corner. I'm going to open up this PDF. Um, so you can see, and we can go through, you can show students how to get the uh, uh, permanent link there. Um, and when we get done, we can just go back here to um, one button. So again, um, there are some uh, other things that you can do. If you have multiple monitors, you can set up some different scenes and stuff. But this is just a basic how to uh, capture uh, video from, um, from your uh, computer here. So uh, you'll probably want to um, edit some of this in something like, uh, uh, again, in a, a video editor like Shotcut or um, uh, Adobe Premiere or iMovie or something like that before you actually put it on there. But uh, this should help you uh, when you're uh, trying to capture video here. All right, cool. Good luck capturing video.